Well, George, I'm very glad to see uh, so many people on such a great day, on such a great occasion. Today, uh, the European Court made its uh, very, mu very much milestone decision, which will be referred in many other cases. And this is, um, I have to be very much thankful to the Committee of Ministers, the permanent representations, which uh, initiated the infringement procedure uh, and uh, which the, the process, they initiated this process, which resulted in today's decision, in, in today's announcement of the decision. And I also would like, would like to thank uh, the European Implementation Network, your organization, George, and, uh, and other people who contacted me uh, to arrange this meeting, which, uh, is, um, uh, which is using the very narrow time opportunity to, to present uh, some ideas, opinions for the next uh, meeting of the Committee of Ministers. Um, uh, I would like to uh, start with uh, uh, remarks about today's decision. Uh, I think uh, it, it outlines very well, um, very well that um, in many, uh, uh, the, the necessity to uh, uh, provide for, for acquittal decision by the, by the local court. Of course, it doesn't say very much explicitly, but in, in my opinion, it, it says that um, Ilgar has to be uh, acquitted uh, uh, because um, the, the, the whole, the, whole crim uh, the criminal charge, all the criminal charges uh, brought against me were groundless, not only groundless, they were politically motivated and all this, um, um, affected uh, the fairness of the trial in the end concerning the second case. So uh, this is important. It is important uh, uh, not to be guided by whatever considerations of the government. Again, it took us three years. It took the Committee of Ministers three years uh, to uh, to declare that Ilgar has to be uh, released and his uh, rights have to be uh, restored and actually initiating the infringement procedure. Between, uh, the first decision on my case was adopted in December 2014 and the infringement procedure itself has been initiated in 2017 December. So exactly three years. Uh, and it was a deliberate procrastination by the government, by the Azerbaijani authorities, every time submitting all kind of um, uh, excuses, uh, initiating uh, or oh, misleading, in fact, the secretariat regarding as you know, Article 52, uh, when the uh, when Secretary General initiated uh, a motion concerning the uh, in connection with Article 52 of the uh, of the Convention, it has been uh, emptied pra practically by empty uh, promises which has been given to the visiting mission uh, uh, in early 2017. And then it became when it became obvious that that uh, that Article 52 mission hasn't delivered anything. It also won certain amount of time to the government. Why time is important? Uh, my main my main concern in, in the in this whole process it, for for the duration of all these six years, it has been that I have been excluded from election process. I cannot run for presidential elections even now. I cannot run at parliamentary elections now. Uh, the government will give uh, many uh, pretexts for that, but I, uh, my, my particular concern is that uh, prohibition to the convicted persons to run at elections are written slightly differently for presidential candidates and for parliamentary candidates. So at some point, the government may say, yes, okay, he's, um, his rights are restored and now he can run for parliamentary elections. Uh, but uh, at the time of presidential elections, the Azerbaijani local um, courts may interpret my situations, uh, situation as someone who is not eligible to run at presidential race. So, uh, regarding the Committee of Ministers' activities, I would like to uh, ask you uh, to request uh, uh, an obliging opinion, so to speak, or a commitment on part of the government 
that as a result of implementation of this de uh, of this decision, I will be um, not on, uh, I will be acquitted because that is the only way for me to stand at presidential elections without any kind of legal uh, pretext impeding that process. Again, slightly different language is used in the constitution to describe eligibility for parliamentary elections and for presidential elections. So I want Azerbaijani government to respond to the Committee of Ministers very clearly that as a result of implementation of, of this uh, uh, judgment, Ilgar Mamadov will have the right to stand as a candidate at, at presidential elections and at parliamentary elections, both. So this is the most important uh, problem for me because the whole thing has been initiated in 2013 in order to block uh, my candidacy at, at the presidential election. Uh, and this is, a this is clearly a political motive. And I'm very pleased today that uh, the court uh, um, basically called for acquittal. Acquittal is the only option uh, which I think will work. Otherwise, there will be always, um, maybe in five years, maybe in four years, whenever the elections, the next elections, presidential elections, new impediments can come and then it will take extra time to uh, to sort them out uh, to sort them out um, it also it is also not clear from the process who is going to be responsible for the six months uh, of probation which has been imposed on me at, at the time of release you know that uh, the uh, supreme court on 28th of march simply uh, said that i had served my prison term in full uh, at the time of release uh, but it ignored the fact that for the next six months i have been uh, under probation and those probation rules and conditions included ban to travel abroad i had to register every 10 days at the probation office and uh, and could, i couldn't travel much uh, outside of baku so uh, all this so who is going to be responsible for that that's not clear um, I think the Committee of Ministers, as a result of this uh, judgment today, need to come up with a new set of measures for the execution, because the old set of measures, which have been identified in the past, um, didn't work, and it took extra time, uh, so, so much time, uh, that new measures are... are uh, um, uh, in, in particular, in particular, uh, uh, maybe maybe the, uh, we need to find some kind of solution for uh, uh, material compensation because we did not request any because this is a committee of ministers. It was a referral by the committee of ministers, not our complaint uh, to the uh, to the uh, grand chamber. So maybe the committee of ministers can come up with. Uh, with a solution uh, regarding just satisfaction, uh, additional compensation or so, uh, because um, the government has to be, um, has to pay the price, not only moral price, not a, a moral price of, of, of this action, uh, um, but also some sort of material price. So not only Azerbaijani government, for, but for the future, so that it doesn't cost them uh, too little uh, to abuse the power. Um, so what happened during these years or since 2013? They uh, eliminated me from presidential race, they eliminated from parliamentary elections, they eliminated me from uh, another presidential elections in 2018 and some municipal elections. So I couldn't lead my party. I couldn't lead my organization towards the election. And uh, only after solving all their constitutional concerns, con conducting and, in fact, uh, fabricating another referendum, solving all the matters concerning national elections, um, in the end, the government, and even having snap presidential election, Ilham Aliyev decided to release me. I mean, this is not, uh, this shouldn't be an, an acceptable. Uh, uh, behavior for a member state uh, when the government simply locks up its opponent, 
for uh, almost six years, conducts all its important uh, constitutional changes, political changes, elections uh, without him or her, uh, and in the end uh, releases him uh, without any significant material compensation, be, put that aside, the material compensation, but even um, uh, uh, without, uh, you know, uh, acquitting him. I am not acquit. I'm still a former convict. For the next six years, I cannot run for parliament. And uh, for and who knows if I can run for president? So as for as long as my right to stand up as a candidate as at the elections, both presidential and parliamentary, are not um, uh, restored. I don't think that this restituto in integrum, uh, which has been re re frequently re uh, referred to in today's decision and also in the Committee of Ministers' decisions many times, uh, I think that is not going to be achieved. And as a result, my case is not going to be closed. So, as a, if, if, a, if a political candidate can be eliminated from all future races by a fraudulent uh, criminal case, um, is it, um, what's the point of the Convention Protection of Human Rights in a Council of, member, a Council of Europe member state? That is the most uh, important a uh, question which we, which we need to answer during this process. Um, I think, uh, and going back to, well, uh, let, I have more comments, but uh, it would be better if, uh, if I could respond to questions regarding my case, because I don't know what is the, what kind of questions may, may arise then, what are the, uh, what issues are of most in concern uh, or most importance. Uh, to the members of the Committee of Ministers. So I, I will stop here uh, and re ready to com uh, hear comments or questions. The, the Committee of Ministers should come up with a new set of measures, new set of measures, and those set of measures for, uh, required for implementation should take into account, as written in the decision, uh, in the judgment, the evolving situation of the applicant, so my situation has been evolving during all these years. So this new set of measures have to take into account uh, my, uh, the evolving situation uh, and uh, should include such parameters as uh, full guarantees of my candidacy at both parliamentary and presidential election. This is one thing. And second, material compensation because uh, otherwise it's just uh, impunity for the government. Uh, we should not all, my, not only my conditions have to be restored so, so that I can run at elections, uh, the government has to be punished also materially, not, not or just, on, uh, not just uh, uh, by declaration that it has been, it has done something not right. Uh, not correctly or illegally uh, under political motivation. Yes, it has been humiliated, that's true, but that is not enough. It has to uh, um, pay a material price. Thank you, Mr. Navrov. Okay. The commentary, I would particularly draw attention of participants of the uh, of this meeting, today, meeting to, uh, to the Article 189, uh, of the of the, the uh, one eight, 189 of the uh, judgment which has been published today uh, it, it basically outlines uh, the necessity for for my acquittal in the very end if you if you look um, then um, uh, yeah that is that is one of the most important things uh, I also see that it separates somehow my case, uh, the, the judgment separates somehow my case from a number of other cases, which put, which some people thought that are very much similar or more or less similar. Um, um, I'm very happy that the judgment said, reiterated that the foundations of the criminal proceeding against me have been uh, challenged. Um, 
and um, um, uh, so it, 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 the, 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 today's decision is also questioning indirectly again the, the second judgment. It, it says that the second judgment, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the violations on the Article 6 uh, have been found because the plausibility of the case has been uh, uh, very low, non-existent, uh, as a result of the uh, politically motivated initiation of the case. So, and uh, uh, it is very important that the uh, uh, court um, uh, uh, underlined that I have been uh, sentenced under the same charges to which I have been arrested. So the whole case is, is nonsense. It has been totally discredited, absolutely. Uh, and I, I wonder how, how much time again it will take uh, for the government to uh, take action. Uh, you know, uh, during all these years, time has been the most important benefit for the government. They used all kinds of pro procedures that exist within the Committee of Ministers, the European Court, uh, in the relations and in diplomacy um, uh, uh, in order to keep me in, in, in prison for as long as possible. Time is the best currency. And during this time, they implemented everything they wanted in terms of constitutional reform, uh, uh, um, uh, constitutional changes, uh, allow, uh, strengthening the, their, uh, their government against democratic principles. So uh, if the Council of Europe gives extra time, so uh, next year there will be parliamentary elections. Today, there's a lot of talk in Azerbaijan about early parliamentary elections. What if elections are held this autumn, for example? How much time the Committee of Ministers uh, will have to deal with this subject if, for example, elections are scheduled to November for, uh, this year? Um, and um, normally they should be conducted in November next year. But there's a lot of political talk in Baku about snap elections, parliamentary elections to be conducted, for instance, in November. So what if by November the government does not uh, fulfill its obligations, does not uh, acquit me, and does not let me run for parliament? What will happen then? And then the same parliamentary, uh, the Azerbaijan will elect another parliamentary delegation uh, to, re to be represented in, at the uh, assembly. And again, without uh, a, 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 an opportunity for me to run, if I wish, if I want to run. So uh, they will buy time. The government will try to buy time as they bought in the past, and they will continue doing that. Even after this decision, they will always procrastinate. I, I think you are very much experienced people, professionals working in this area, and that is why you are... Uh, sitting in such a, uh, uh, you know, important, uh, uh, at such an important level within the Council of Europe. Um, I think the, uh, the question is, for how long can the Council of Europe and the Committee of Ministers pay the reputational price of uh, stubbornness of the Azerbaijani government? A citizen of, of a member state has been put in jail under criminal charges, for political, uh, under politically motivated criminal charges, six years ago. And uh, more than six years after, he still cannot run for, for, uh, for parliamentary or presidential election. So, um, I think that is a very serious challenge uh, to the quality of work. Um, uh, uh, you know, some organizations may challenge the functionality of the Council of Europe in that respect. 
And again, I, I cannot complain. Uh, and my per me personally, I cannot complain because my case has been chosen by you uh, as a very uh, important case, and uh, it, it led to initiation of the criminal uh, of the infringement procedure. That that all is good, but. Uh, People will ask me, and they do ask me. The pub public does ask me. So, what in the end can you run? You can't. So, where, where are the protections which have been promised by the, our membership in the Council of Europe? Where is the justice which has been promised as a result of uh, our uh, signature in the Convention of Human Rights? You couldn't run. Six years ago, you cannot run in six years again. The way is the justice. Yes, you are free, but you would be free eventually. But we can't vote for you. Not because we don't want, but because there, you, you are not allowed to stand. So what shall I do then as a politician? Take people to the streets and uh, demand implementation of the decision, European court's decision? That's... Uh, in that case, um, yeah, people, uh, how, how to motivate people to defend uh, the, the process which the organization itself has difficulty defending. Uh, that is a serious uh, question which will be put forward. So uh, I understand that you have very little time. Now, uh, today is 29th. In four days or five days, you are going, of which uh, a few days are not even working days. You are going to have this committee of ministers meeting, and by that time there must be a lot of communication with the government. What as to what their intention is, and so on. And the government may, government is uh, may be tempted to say, "Oh, there is very short notice. We should uh, postpone uh, for the next quarterly session in September." Um, for instance, if that happens, if the government convinces you as a committee of ministers to postpone the review of the case to September. What if in September the, or in August the government declares early parliamentary election? Again, I'm out of politics for the next five years. That is the government's main goal, main intention. So therefore I think action needs to be urgent on part of the government uh there is uh whenever they want to arrest someone they act very quickly when they want to fabricate the case they act very quickly in minutes what prevents them and this has been proven in my case which is totally fabricated it has absolutely no ground and this is reflected in all decisions of the european court and the grand chamber so what prevents them to assemble the Supreme Court immediately, immediately, and adopt a decision on my acquittal? What prevents them? Can the Committee of Ministers ask them on, on the political level, on the, on, on the level of political communication? I understand that your work is highly legal, legalistic, legal. I understand that. Um, but at the same time, the, uh, the, the Committee of Ministers is a political body too, and has a dialogue, political dialogue with the authority. Uh, you, uh, so either they do it quickly, or you should uh, consider maybe um, uh, adopting a new set of measures and uh, insisting on their immediate uh, implementation. By the way, in one of the decisions or interim resolutions of the committee of ministers, your, com your committee, uh, there has been a provision, I think it was in 2017, summer 2017, that uh, my case will be reviewed at every session of the committee of ministers. And, and, and then I saw that it has been included in the agenda. So there is no need to wait for the next quarterly meeting in a way. Uh, in terms of uh, um, you know procedure, so you could, if they if they ask more time, there is no need to uh, give them extra three months. Uh, there is a decision of the committee of ministers. I forgot which one, but it was in summer 2017, as far as I remember. 
which said that the, uh, uh, which said that Ilgars Mamadov's case will be reviewed at every regular session of the Committee of Ministers. So there is no need to wait for uh, for the human rights meeting uh, of the Committee of Ministers. That is a procedural hint which I would suggest uh, in this in this situation. <clears throat> 